great. Thank you so much. That, thanks so much. I'd forgotten about that, really. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank, so, uh, thank you, my sister. We have started recording thank now. Thank you, my sister. Okay, so uh, we are saying it's, you know, an oral form, it's an oral product, uh, while the written one is written. Now let's look at the oral product. Uh, the oral product, usually, uh, you, you know, it, it's quite interesting. It's very difficult to really uh, talk about it because there are a lot of people that have actually, uh, you know, uh, looked at literature very, very loosely, but it's quite broad, okay? Uh, so the first thing I need to mention is that generally or loosely considered oral, okay, am I there? What's happened, have I been logged out? Okay, okay, I think, uh, this was getting messed up. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, yeah, so most people look at it loosely, but when, loosely when we talk about oral literature, we're talking about this literature that is usually traditional. Now, what do I mean when I say traditional? By traditional, I'm referring to something, actually you, you might understand that uh, what is traditional is that which has been happening with time. So it's been handed over. It's like, you know, it's been in, inherited. So it's like heritage, okay, it's traditional, it's continuous. It's on and on, it's always happening. So it's handed over from generation to generation. That is traditional. And that is the key form taken by oral literature. Remember I said it's the key form taken by oral literature. I'm not saying that that is the only form, no, because there are other forms, okay? So uh, oral literature is usually traditional. It is usually that's, that literature that's been with the people, you know, over time, almost all the time they're talking about it, almost all the time they're sharing it. And usually when we talk about oral literature, what comes to people's minds are folk tales, the tales or the stories that are told by the fireplace. You will remember very well, I think those of you that are, uh, that are in the same age group as myself or you're even older, uh, that it was very traditional to tell stories by the fireplace in the evenings. Everyone has to tell a tale or everyone has to do that. Those tales are part of oral literature. They're part of literature because you know that these tales are actually meant for beauty. They are meant to be enjoyed. All right, so just uh, give me one minute. Okay, uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, so I'm saying these tales are tales that have been told to us over time and we have, I think we have been part of them. Uh, now, these tales, these stories uh, come in several forms, okay? They come in several forms. Uh, they'll come in, in terms of, uh, well, first we call them oral prose narratives, oral prose narratives. Uh, I think that's uh, what I have to mention. Uh, I've written that term there uh, in the chat window. So we call them oral prose narratives, okay? That's what they are. So oral prose narratives usually come in form of myths, uh, legends, and generally, you know, would be fables. Uh, yeah, apart from fables, we we'll also have parables, you know, there are all these stories, these stories that are just told by word of mouth. But then I'd like to zero in more on myths. Uh, why I want to talk much about myths, because they've been misunderstood. And, the, you know, we'd not really understand, for instance, you know, myths generally are those stories whose origin we cannot easily trace. So we cannot trace the origin of this story. We do not know where it comes from. We do not know how it started. And in most cases, they cannot be proven scientifically. So if we can't prove them scientifically, they become a myth. I'm sure you remember interacting with people 
who you told something to and they said it was a myth. No, those are just myths. In short, they're saying those are lies. So myths are stories that cannot easily be proven. Okay? So they're generally, they're generally created. They've just been made up by people, you know, in their minds. That's what separates them from legends, which we'll get into shortly. So for instance, we have myths of creation, the creation of the world. Uh, do we have any losses here? Lozi? Any Lozi here? I'm here. Who is that, Martha? Yes, yes. Martha, do you know the story of Kamunu and Nyambe? Uh, no you idea, know? sir. You have no idea about Kamunu and Nyambe? Okay, okay. All right. No, Rev, now you, you, you need to do that research, okay? This time I'll need you to do that research on Kamun and Nyambe, okay? Particularly you, Martha. Uh, you have to get that information, okay? So we have stories about, you know, uh, about the beginning of the world. How did the world begin? Okay, does anyone have an idea how the world began really? Like you really what you, you, you think is the way the world began. Who can share information with us on how the world began, how life began, how we got to be where we are? Just raise your hand if you are ready to share on that. Don't just uh, mute your microphone. Raise your hand, then we'll ask you to speak because there could be two or three of you who want to speak at the same time. So if you all unmute, there will be chaos. Who is ready to talk about the beginning of the world, how the world came into being? At least one person should have an idea of how the world started. Nobody. Okay. Joe Mulenga. Yes, Joe. Share with us what you know about how the world began. Joe Mulenga. Joe, you're not muted, so we should be able to hear you. Okay. Seems you have a problem probably with your microphone because you are not muted, but we can't hear you. So anyone else who can contribute as Joe is still trying to sort out the technical glitches that he has? Anyone else? Okay, yes, yes, I can tell. So uh, Joe is saying his mic is not uh, working. Who else can talk about the, how the world began? Anyone who knows? Anyone who knows? No one was there. So you have no idea how it began. Yes. Um, hello? Okay, Grace has raised the hand. Please let's listen to Grace. James, you come in later. Okay. Yes. Uh, so probably the mostly the most theory we have about how the world began is the the from religious point of view, which is the change that God created the world, uh, but also from other texts like scientifically there was a big bang and that's all I've heard and nothing traditional so far. Okay, and which one do you believe? Uh, I, I believe the religious point of view, which is God created the world. Okay. For now, that's, that's the one I move with. Okay, where did you hear that story? Uh, from church. From church, okay, okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's listen to Jonathan, James Jonathan. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> she's touched my part. I wanted to say the only story that we have, most of us, is that the Bible says God created the world. Okay. That is the history we know. Yeah. So if it's a myth, it's not in our place to say, oh, I don't know. That's what we know. 
Okay, so both of you know the same story. I want a different story. Who can share with us a different story? A different story. I can't see hands up. This is very interesting now, I have to tell you. I was I asked Martha Elozi to tell us about the story of Kamuno and Nyambe. Okay, she has no idea. Of course, I know the story. I'm not lost at all, but I know the story. So it's very interesting. Martha does not know her own literature. And uh, both Jonathan and Grace are telling us the story that belongs to the Jews. They don't know their own stories. Okay, now that is uh, Hebrew mythology. That's Hebrew mythology. And I think we have taken it as gospel truth. We believe that it happened that God was standing on top of a hill. I don't know if hills were, at, oh, he hadn't even created hills yet before. So I don't know, he was standing on top of something. I don't know if he had even created that. And he was telling this story, you know, he said, uh, let there be light, let there be that. That's what you are referring to, I assume. And we say that that's how it started. Now that is Hebrew mythology. Those are stories that were told by, you know, by Jews around the fireplace, okay, by, by Hebrews. They are seated there, they start sharing these stories. That's what happened, okay? And really you go to Loziland, you find these stories, their own stories. You go to, you know, to Bemba land, you go to Chewa land, almost every cultural grouping has these stories. These stories have been told because people want to interpret their world. They want to understand their world. They want someone to have an idea or to have meaning out of what they're doing. Because without these stories, it will be difficult for me to know why I am, what, you know, or even just to create a narrative, a story of why I am here. So these stories are meant to give meaning to our lives. And interestingly, I do not think there's anyone in this class right now, apart from me, who believes that the, the lousy story is as valid as the Hebrew story. We've been told over time that there's only one true story, and that is the Hebrew, the Hebrew story. So there are people who even have challenges accepting the science story, the, 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 you know, because even the scientific story, the Big Bang, that is you know, scientific mythology. We cannot easily prove it. There are traces of proof here and there, but it cannot entirely be proven. It's difficult to believe. Though I think the first time some of you learned about, uh, about homo habilis, homo, you know, Australopithecus, it was difficult for you to, you know, to really grasp that story because you had been given this religious story, the Hebrew story, over the years, from the time you were born, it had been told to you and you got to a point of saying, there's no story better than this. There's no story more truthful than this. And that is the only story we believe. Now, I would like you to know that as James, Jonathan, you know, argued at the beginning and you insisted, James, sir, to say, we need Zambian texts. That is how much we need our own myths. Okay? That is how much we need our own myths. So the, you know, these Hebrew myths are not the only myths. The Zambian myths are not the only myths, and you know that when you talk about Zambian culture, it's really actually you know, a misconception of reality because we have Zambian cultures. Different cultural groupings are in Zambia. Each of these groupings have their own myths. So I'd like to know that when we talk about these myths of the origin, we have to know, for instance, how did death come to human beings? Uh, you are saying that uh, it's Eve, I think it's Eve who ate an apple, I don't know if you say apple, just a fruit, whatever you call, you know, it is called if ate an apple and this apple led to death, that's how man started dying. But then when you pay attention again, you will be told that actually what happened was that uh, God uh, asked people about death and then they said, they sent a chameleon and the lizard to confirm. And then the, because of how slow the, the chameleon is and how fast the lizard is, there was miscommunication and that's how man ended up dying. So there's all that, there are all these stories about how death came to be. 
And you get to scientists, they will tell you that actually there's no such a thing as the spirit or the soul. It's just the biological functioning of the body. When this biological functioning of the body ceases, that means someone has died and don't expect anything to come, to come out of that. So, you know, there's all this information that is there. And what we need basically is to listen to all these narratives and do not look at these narratives as gospel truths. They're not meant to be taken literally. Are we together? They shouldn't be taken literally to say they are factual. No, these are narratives that are meant to be explored. That's why I said by the end of this program, by the end of your four years here with us at UNSA, you should be a different person, a person who is going to question everything. I know there could be very strong uh, uh, Muslims in here, strong Christians, strong Africanists like myself. Please be open-minded. Know that there are different stories that try to explain our reality and you need to be open to them. So do not lose your faith because of this course and do not uh, be a blind person because of your faith. Be open-minded by blind. I do not mean uh, our friends who are visually impaired. No, I'm using the word loosely, but it shouldn't be mistaken. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that do not uh, close yourself to the wider world because our reality is complex. So that's about myths. So myths are usually tied to the gods. There is a relationship between man and the spiritual world. That's how these myths work. But then on the other hand, we have legends. When we talk about legends, these are stories that are based on something that we can easily you know, prove, that is, can easily be scientifically proven. But then, because you know, these are oral tales, they are stories that are told by word of mouth, most of the times what happens is that you know, these realities are usually embellished. Okay, so someone will add something to it. I, I, I'm sure most of you have, have found yourselves in a situation where you know, uh, you, you are probably in a workshop situation and you play this game of oral communication where one person says something to the next and this one says to the next. By the time you get the story from the last person, it has changed form. It might not change this form completely, but you find that there's a lot of change in the way this information is shared. So if you remember that, you will agree with me that that is the same case with oral literature. So as much as it is a true story, the story of Shaka, as it is being told and retold, it carries some information that is not really the way it is expected to be. But then I would like you again to become aware of the fact that these realities we're talking about, because I've said that, you know, a legend is based on something that is true, okay? Now, I'm not saying a legend is a true story, no. I'm saying it is based on something factual. It is based on something that can easily be scientifically proven. It is based on a story that is somehow historically accurate, but then it is embellished with some information to ensure that it carries a certain kind of weight, okay? It becomes quite weighty, so that's why it is embellished in most cases. And because of that embellishment, it usually takes on some aspects of falsity. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of stories. Okay, I've talked about Shaka himself, okay? Our heroes, these stories about our heroes, you find that they are not as accurate as you would want them to be. There's a lot that is added to them to make them be larger than life characters. Uh, the example I've given you of Shaka, I like giving examples of uh, Moses in the Bible, even Jesus Christ, you know, uh, I know Christians don't want to hear that, but don't worry. Uh, we are not in church, we're in class right now. So don't worry. Uh, you always refresh your, your faith when you get back to church. But if you look at the story of Jesus Christ, you've even been told that he was born of a virgin mother, right? The mother was a virgin when Jesus Christ was born. And I'm sure we all believe that because uh, we've been taught that over time. Uh, I'll tell you a very interesting story. When you come to Eastern province, where I come from, okay? Uh, we believe that our chief 
who is actually our king, Kalonga Gawa Ondi, is born from Mama Nyangu, the sister to the chief. So uh, the current chief has a sister and the, you know, the sister is called Mama Nyangu, the queen mother, the one who gives birth to the next king, okay? Because we are inherited by our sister's children and not our, our, our father's, or, you know, our, our, our own children. So my son cannot inherit me, but my sister's son can inherit me. I'm sure you know why. Can, can someone give me an idea why we say it's the sister's child that should inherit? Please raise your hand all the time. Why do you think it's the sister's child who should inherit uh, the king or the chief? Yes, uh, James. James. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I'll use we because <laughs> I'm also from East. Okay, I think because oh. it's our custom. Yes. Yes, it's our norm, it's our custom. That's how it's supposed to be, it's our culture. So okay. the fact that, um, or I should say, your, sis uh, your sister's children will ever be present, then maybe your children being claimed by some other people, maybe I should say. But the fact is, it goes, it's a norm, it's a culture. So we have to follow it. Okay. Well, you're saying your sister's children will always be present. Okay, there's another person who, who raised their hand. Unfortunately, I can't see who it is. Is that who also raised their hand? Uh, Joe. I hope your microphone will be able to work now. Joel. Joel, you raised your hand. It's not now. Okay, who else raised their hand? Can you raise your hand again? Why? Yes, Martha. Martha, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um. Uh, it's just a guess, sir. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, you get um your sister's child because you know to say without any doubt to say that child belongs to your sister. Mm -hmm. And like if you get a child from your wife. I'm talking about a chief, now I'm the chief, now I'm getting a son from my wife. I'm not too sure whether that son is really mine. Okay. All right, uh, Joe is saying the same thing. Say the, the, the belief is that only the woman knows who the mother truly is. Yeah, so well, basically, you know, th those are some of the issues that uh, we have to deal with, particularly as chairs. Uh, you know, we believe so much that our true relatives, are those that were born, you know, uh, with from the same mother. Okay, we come from the same mother, then we truly are related. If we come from the same father, well, we can't be very sure. Okay, we can't be very sure whether that's why uh, you know it is argued that we all know our mothers, but we don't really know our fathers. I know it's something that we don't want to think about because it feels bad, uh, especially for us men. But well, that's the thing. Uh, there is every evidence that your child came from uh from your wife but there's no evidence that it came from you <laughs> you get a point so that's the thing so our chiefs are born from the auntie who is the sister to the chief all right so mama nyangu does not sleep with anyone to have this child meaning the child who is born from mama nyangu is special making them be eligible to be chief so the woman doesn't sleep with anyone. The child is spiritual. Now I'll ask you a simple question. Do you believe that? I'll start with Chewas. James, you said you're Chewa. Do you believe that uh, Mama Nyangu doesn't sleep with anyone to have that child? Uh, <laughs> I'm on the crossroads right now because I'm Chewa and I'm a Christian. Oh, so. okay. Great. Let's listen. Let's listen to Joseph Tembo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Joseph. Not before now, sir, I can believe. But after having some knowledge, I think I can too. No, no, I didn't get you clearly. Joseph. I'm saying that maybe before now I can believe. Mm. For now, because I don't have any knowledge about. <laughs> About oh, 
because you don't have any knowledge about what happens. That's very interesting. It's like you don't really believe, you still have some doubts, okay? I know it's very difficult for people to really believe. They'll say, no, it's not true. Uh, but then I'll ask you a very simple one, okay? Uh, do you believe that Jesus was born from a virgin uh, girl or woman? I believe because that's what the Bible tells us. You believe that? Okay, Grace? Yes. Okay, okay, let's move to Grace. I've seen your hand up. Do you believe that, Grace? That Jesus Christ was born from a virgin? Yes, I believe. Okay, okay, that's good. Anyone else who believes that uh, Mary was a virgin? James Jonathan does. <laughs> yeah, I know, every, almost everyone here would say, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Mary was a virgin, but... Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure, Wilson? <laughs> Wilson, are you sure? No. <laughs> hey, you're not sure, okay. Now, there are very few who will say what you have said, and you have to know that you have to be extra careful before you say that, because uh, okay? people are not expected to say anything like that. Uh, that's what our world has told us. So do not doubt what has been taught to you. But well, I'm trying to tell you that, you know, we have uh, the story of Gawa Undi, and we're told that uh, he is born without a father. And even when Christians came to Africa and started preaching Jesus Christ, uh, Chewas were just laughing and said, well, we know what really happens. Of course, they did not tell us, but they said, we know what really happens. So they do not believe that Jesus Christ really was born that. But you realize that if, for instance, if, if Gawa Und is really born from, you know, from a, a union uh, that has uh, sex involved, if, it, if he's born from the relationship between a male and a female, then it's possible that this narrative has been crafted that there is no father involved simply because we want to give this special authority to him because if this person is not born of a man and a woman then we know that this person is special and if they are this special then they can hold a very high position in society they can easily be regarded as a spiritual person as a spirit person who is higher than the rest of us therefore they can hold a special position Joseph, you'd like to say something. Yes, Joseph, you raised your hand. Was it a mistake? Yes, it was. Okay, great. Yeah, so, you know, so we're saying that, you know, we try to give power to make something special. Almost every one of us wants to be seen to be special in one way or another. Most of the things that we do, we try to, you know, to appear to be special, okay? the way you will speak, the way you will dress, just a number of things that you will do. You want to be special, you want to be different from everyone else, but if you're going to lead a lot of people, then you have to be extra special, extremely special. And really we get to Greek mythology, you come across these relations that God's had with man. So we are saying that when we're talking about a legend, someone that really existed, a reality that the world has had, okay, if really, there's been this reality. Then we have to know that this reality usually has a lot of falsity embellished in it. There's a lot of falsity that comes in and this falsity cannot easily, you know, uh, be dispelled, but then it is a legend. So I do not know whether Jesus Christ and Moses are legends or not, but I know that they, the you know, chances that, that they lived are very high. It is very likely that these really lived at some point and that in their stories, there have been some untruths brought in because they're supposed to be given power. I'm sorry about that noise. I'm teaching from home. So uh, expect some things not to go right. The next lecture, I'll be in the office tomorrow, so it will be better, there won't be this much points. Okay, so we're saying that there's a lot that comes in. So we have legends, okay? These are stories, as we have already said, that are based on some truth, you know, some historically accurate uh, information. The information is very true, very historical. It really happened, but then we can't prove it. 
okay, because there's some truth that some untruth that are coming in. Actually, if the story of of uh, Michael Sata continues being shared already, you'll be surprised to hear of the kind of person that Michael Sata was, probably maybe taller than a two-story house, very tall with huge legs and he was a giant because of the things that he's been able to accomplish. We can easily look at it from that angle. He can always come out as this great being that has ever been. So we can easily be, you know, be given this kind of reality. And it is a reality that people, you know, once shared with people over a long period of time is accepted as gospel truth. And that's how most of these come in. Uh, let, let, let's move to animal stories, for instance. Uh, common amongst these is the story of uh, Kalulu, okay, and uh, that's my favorite character, uh, Kalulu, who, Kalulu the hare. Uh, he's called many different things in other languages, uh, but here we have Kalulu uh, in our, uh, our tales, and Kalulu plays a very important role in our stories. So the story of Kalulu basically, or animal tales are what we call fables. These are stories that are told by the fireplace, okay? Uh, they, are, they have animal characters, but these animals behave like human beings. In the first place, they talk like human beings. Remember Kalulu and the digging of the well? Other animals dug the well and Kalulu refused to take part. And then Kalulu came back to drink from the well and he started playing tricks on these, uh, on these animals, because Kalulu basically is a trickster ca uh, character. In almost every scenario we encounter him, he's going to play a trick. Though sometimes uh, weaker animals like the tortoise are able to play a trick on him as well. So he's able to lose. Either he makes a mistake or they play a clear trick on him. For instance, uh, Kalulu will sleep while tortoise, you know, as they are racing with tortoise. So Kalulu goes to sleep and tortoise is there crawling slowly. Is it walking? I don't know what you call it, but well, he's there racing against Kalulu. And since Kalulu is asleep, by the time he wakes up, tortoise is near the finishing line. Kalulu runs and he's, as he's about to reach the finishing line, tortoise has reached and tortoise has won the race. Uh, in, you know, the other version is where tortoise talks to the brothers who all look as, you know, like him because you know, they look alike. And he lines them up you know, from the starting, you know, from the, uh, the, the starting line to the finishing line. They are on the side of the road and they are running. Kalulu says, yes, Totis, where are you? And he says, I'm here. And he, he appears and at every point, Kalulu runs up to the very end. He finds that Totis is crossing the line. It's because Totis used the brother. So there's always this idea of, you know, uh, the trickster uh, character being tricked as well by another trickster character. So we have these stories uh, of animals in our stories. Uh, we also have parables. Uh, you notice that a parable is usually equally short because you know it's an oral tale. It's not written. Okay, I know when we encounter uh, the form that Jesus Christ used a lot because Jesus Christ used the parable quite a lot. Okay, so when we encounter the uh, the parable in the Bible, we encounter it only with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the one that really used it, you know, very effectively. So the parable is a, is equally made up. Okay, I think. Jesus Christ was really brilliant because almost every parable he used was very key to the discussion. So we have parables. They are short and they have usually human characters. And these characters are characters that, that are, you know, the audience is able to identify with. They are characters the audience understands very well. They know that these people are somehow real. They can see them, they can feel what they, those people feel. But these stories have just been made up. And they've been made up to benefit the audience. And now you will remember what we talked about at the very beginning when we're talking about you know, the role of literature in the duplication of society. We see that the parable does just that, it duplicates society. It shares information about what society is like, and it is that. But apart from that, when we talk about these folk tales, there are many other folk tales that will have human characters, okay, that I share, that come from our spaces. Uh, does anyone know the story of Cam Doty? Cam Doty. Can I see a hand up of anyone who knows the story of Cam Doty? 
I've heard of it, but I've forgotten. No. <laughs> okay. Anyone who remembers it, Houston can't remember it. Anyone who remembers the story of Cam Dochi? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Can, can, can you, Annie, can you briefly tell us what the story is about? Very briefly. The story of Cam Dochi. Uh, Cam Dochi was a child made of soil. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't allowed to play in the rains or go anywhere when it's raining. So this one time, I can't exactly remember, but she was made of clay. Okay. All right. The, the, the version that I know, well, Annie's version is that uh, it was a girl. The version that I know is that actually Kamdoti was male. Okay. It was a boy. All right. And he wasn't supposed to play in the rain, but then... Uh, he went to head cattle with the friends one day, then it started raining and the mother rain with the plastic, she covered him in the plastic, that's how she got back home with him. And that's how he survived. And she was a special child because this woman was unable to give birth to a child. But then this old woman who she met by the river is the one who uh, helped her. So she helped the old woman. Then the old woman said, what do you want? And he said, I want a baby. He said, okay, can you make a child out of play? She made the child out of play. Then the woman breathed into that child and the child became a living child, a living being. So that's how Kamdot was born. So he was saved from the rain. Then the next time it happened, it was too late for the mother to save him. That's how he died. So that's about Kamdoti. And we know that the name is coming from the soil that he was made from. So that is uh, about Kamdoti. So those are the stories uh, that we have. Uh, in our next discussion, we will go a little further now to look at other elements uh, of uh, oral literature or other forms or other types uh, of oral literature that we encounter. Okay, are uh, there any questions? Uh, any questions that people would like us to address? Well, we're, we're remaining with less than a minute. Okay, I assume there are no questions. Uh, we're going to continue our lecture tomorrow at the prescribed time. So let's just follow the timetable. I will share on the WhatsApp group how I'm going to share this, uh, uh, this lecture with you, but we're going to use YouTube. I don't I, I have challenges uh, sharing on that, but I know on YouTube, it will be there forever. So I'm going to uh, post this on YouTube, then you can interact with it from there. Okay, so I would like to end the lecture now. Uh, thank you for your participation. You've been an active class and I love that. I think we're going to have a very good time together. You are great people. Thank you so much. Thank you, you're also great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, is it possible you can share it on our WhatsApp group? I'll find a way, I'll communicate uh, through the group. All uh, right, that would be helpful, thank you. Sir. Okay, thank you, Thank George. you so much. Okay, thank you.